Hello and welcome to the final session of the prayer course, part two, An Answer Prayer. You've made it. And together we followed in the footsteps of Jesus through Maundy Thursday, Good Friday and Holy Saturday, which brings us to the significance of Easter Sunday, the day when all our unanswered prayers come together in the greatest miracle of all time. And so for this final session, I am absolutely delighted to welcome not just Pete, Greg, but his wife, Sammy, here as Yay. well. <laughs> Sammy, it's just so lovely to have you here. Pete just talked about you a lot. <laughs> and I've read so much of your story in God on Mute that I kind of feel like I actually know you. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for having me. Now, I'm aware that the book was first written way back in 2007. And I think that you first became ill in 2001. Yeah, that's right. So it's been a long, long road. But I have to say that you look so well here today. Oh, I'm so much better, thank you. Way better than the doctors ever thought I would or could be. And I'm sure that's due to the prayers of so many people around the world, which has made such a massive difference. But you're not completely better, though, are you? No. I mean, we've been incredibly fortunate. So many people have, have it so much worse than I do, but I do still have a pretty serious chronic condition and I still haven't been healed. So that means regular MRI scans and a ridiculous number of really strong drugs twice a day, which all have their own really bad side effects. So, But I honestly just feel really grateful and Really just glad to be here. Pete, what's it like having Sammy here today? Oh, it's just lovely. <laughs> I feel so proud of her, actually. All I did was write the book and Sammy's had to live it, mm. which was and is infinitely harder. Aww. So today we're thinking about Easter Sunday and I wondered, Sammy, whether you might be willing to read our Bible passage? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so... This is John 20, verses 19 to 20. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Amazing story. Sunday evening, it's the very first Easter. The disciples are in hiding behind locked doors, fearing for their lives, are terrified. Mm. Jesus has risen from the dead and everything has changed, but it hasn't quite dawned on them yet. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus just appears in the room. Can you imagine their faces? And he says, peace be with you. Wow. Because they're just completely freaking out. And then he does a really interesting thing. He shows them his hands and his side. Why? Well, he's showing them his scars, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. But isn't that fascinating? Think about it for a second. This is the new resurrected body. He's able to walk through walls and do all kinds of cool stuff. And yet he still carries the scars of crucifixion. Jesus has been resurrected, restored and healed but no plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. When the Lord heals our wounds, he doesn't necessarily remove the scars. Mm. The author Brennan Manning says, on the last day, Jesus will look us over, not for medals, diplomas or honours, but for scars. Wow. <laughs> so there's an authority, isn't there, about people who've faithfully endured suffering? There really is. There's a, a, a beauty in our brokenness. And that's actually why I've brought along this Kintsugi bowl. Have a look at that. Mm. Wow. I've heard about these. It's that technique about repairing broken pottery of gold, isn't it? Exactly. So instead of trying to conceal or cover up the cracks, Japanese craftsmen actually celebrate the object's brokenness. And look at that lovely little green chip just there. Yeah, it's <laughs> lovely, isn't it? Beautiful. And it's not just about sort of gold streaks. It's deeper than that. It's an underlying philosophy, really, that seeks to celebrate the beauty in brokenness. It doesn't try and uh, disguise the imperfections of the past, mm. doesn't try to erase the history of the object. Rather, it takes quite an ordinary 
bit of pottery, to be honest, and makes it more precious, get this, and more beautiful than it was before it was broken. As Peter and I have studied this Kintsugi bowl, we've realised how God sees our brokenness differently. We've always just wanted it fixed, but he wants it blessed. And that's a big difference. It's changed the way we pray. Mm, I like that. We want it fixed, but he wants it blessed. Right. At the start, we basically prayed, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here type prayers. Like, heal me, Lord, or get this tumour out of my skull, or please stop this seizure and don't let me die. But these days, our prayers are maybe a bit more nuanced, like, I feel exhausted. Give me a bit more strength. That's, that's certainly how I prayed this morning. I wasn't praying for healing. I was asking the Lord to give me strength to do this interview so I wasn't going to get all muddled and say something stupid. Oh, not at all. You're doing a great job. <laughs> I mean, you know, just to be clear, we do still sometimes just flat out pray for healing. Yeah. But if that was all we ever prayed, it would sort of put my entire life on hold, you know. Complete healing would become this big, flat-out, non-negotiable that undermined everything else that we did. We're just trying to be a bit more like that Kintsugi bowl, not so much trying to go back to how we were before I got ill, but we're asking the Lord to take my brokenness and make it into something beautiful for his glory. It's a different kind of healing, really. Mm. So, Sammy, just talk to us a bit more about that. How are you trying to redeem rather than just remove your chronic condition? Well, the most obvious thing is that a few years ago, when my seizures finally began to settle down a bit, I decided to retrain as a counsellor. I wanted to take my struggles and somehow use them to help bind up the broken hearts of other people. Mm. I can't work full time. I just wouldn't have the energy for that. I get exhausted. But I suppose that's a little bit of the Kintsugi gold in my brokenness. I've always loved 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 to 5, where the God of all comfort comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also mm. our comfort abounds through Christ. And that's what I'm trying to do with my counselling. Mm -hmm. And I bet you're a brilliant counsellor. <laughs> She's amazing. Yeah. Everyone wants to come and see her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can I just say, Pete's always so quick to say how brave and how great I am, but... The truth is my illness has been agony for him and I've watched the toll it's taken on him, carrying the load, covering for me more than anyone knows. But it's also made him stronger, deeper and more empathetic as a leader. Illness can be really quite isolating for couples, you know, and even though we suffer the same thing, we suffer it on different paths. We go different ways. Being a carer is actually a really lonely path. You know, I was listening recently to this old interview with Maya Angelou, uh, the African-American poet, civil rights activist. And she's definitely someone who wore her scars as medals. Mm. And in the interview, she talked about an absolute tragedy. She was raped by her mother's boyfriend when she was just seven and a half years old. Mm. Um, and when quite rightly, she told someone what he had done, word got out and he was, he was kicked to death in punishment. And so little Maya was obviously traumatized all over again. She felt uh, guilty. She concluded that her words had killed her mother's boyfriend. So she decided to stop speaking. For five years, Maya Angelou was too terrified to talk. Her words seemed too powerful to be trusted. And of course, Maya went on to become one of the, the greatest voices of her generation, one of the most articulate wordsmiths in America. So here's the point. Our deepest suffering 
can become our greatest gift to the world. Mm, our deepest suffering can become our greatest gift to the world. I love that. And Pete and Sammy, I just want to say that I really do see that in you both as well. Mm. And I suspect that the things that you've been through, you'll never fully be able to explain. But thank you for not trying to conceal it. Thank you for making it such an important part of your message to help so many people. Mm. Well, thank you, Gemma. Thank you. It's been honestly a privilege making these videos with you. And of course, the ultimate example of someone's suffering becoming their greatest blessing to the world, right, it's Jesus. Mm, yeah. Amen. Well, it's now time for our final interview. And today's guest first encountered the resurrected Jesus as a young woman growing up in Iran. It changed everything. And with incredible courage, she began sharing her newfound faith everywhere she went, even though it is illegal to evangelize in that country. Yet every day she led people to Jesus. And then the inevitable came and she was arrested by the religious authorities. In 2010, December, uh, they arrested uh, most of our uh, house church leaders and they arrested me as well. And what were you praying when you were in prison? Uh, I was, oh, uh, I had 24 hours every day to pray <laughs> there. I didn't have anything else to do there, just worshiping God and praying. I was praying for our ministry uh, because when they arrested us, all our house churches had to stop. And I was very, very upset with that. I was so sad because of the everything we planted. It was in a second we felt, oh, everything gone. But God is faithful. And uh, he did the amazing thing after that. But, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, um, I think I can say I prayed for the salvation for my guard, for my interrogator, for the judge. And do you feel like your prayers were being answered at that time? One of the interrogator um, asked one question and it really shocked me and I knew because of all this prayer and what's happening through spiritually through all of us in that prison. She, she, um, she want to know uh, why we became a Christian. We all were Muslim and why we are ready to be in prison and not denying Jesus. I heard some a prison guard became a Christian uh, through some of our people inside of prison. There's another story we'd just like to quickly touch on and it's about Gladys and Mark Bliss because they also had an incredible story. Would you tell us about them? This uh, amazing people, these amazing uh, and faithful missionaries. Uh, and uh, Mark and Gladys Bliss uh, is uh, uh, two of them. Uh, in, uh, I think it was 1969, uh, they were in Iran for some years and they were, uh, they were sharing gospel. They were trying to, uh, you know, build a Bible school in Iran. And in one of their trips to uh, one city, uh, they, uh, they had a car accident and they lost their three uh, children they have. Our story in Iran started uh, when, our, when the people ready to sacrifice for Jesus and uh, they really paid the price and they didn't, it's interesting, their life for me was really interesting because they didn't complain. When you uh, read their story, you can see they were praying and telling God, God, we, uh, we plant the seeds, three seeds uh, in Iran for the harvest. Maybe that time they didn't see the harvest, but now we see the har harvest. We can reap this harvest because they, they plant these seeds 
in Iran with their tears, with their sacrifice, and many other people, many other people, and uh, maybe that time before this 40 years, they, uh, nobody could see the result and fruit, but now we are reaping, even with the, they closed the country for all the missionaries, but we are reaping the, you know, their, uh, the seeds they planted that time. And we're just going to end this time together by listening to Mark's poem. So this was written and read now by Mark Bliss, who's now an elderly man, but he's reflecting on the unspeakable price that he and his wife paid to serve the Lord in Iran. Lord, when we whispered yes, to thee so many years ago. The things that lay ahead for us, you did not let us know. We said yes in the sunshine when our hearts were glad and free. And all we knew was that your love would guide us through life's sea. We couldn't fully count the cost for how could we discern the price we'd pay to win the loss? and hasten your return. But you, Lord Jesus, led the way beneath a troubled sky. And time has written in the sky our heartache and our cry. For now we know what was involved in our eternal yes. Victories, yes, midst fiery trials, living treasures laid to rest, Yet ringing from our heart of hearts is one triumphant chord, the sweetest of all harmony. We say, it's all right, Lord. It's all right, Lord. What an amazing thing to say when you've lost everything. Mm. It's all right, Lord. Yeah, I just, I don't know if I can say that. I just kept thinking that these people must understand the suffering of the cross and the power of the resurrection in a way that I just don't. And they clearly have such a strong hope, not just for their prayers to be answered in, in this life, in people like Ladan and in the amazing Iranian revival, but in the life to come, right? The hope of seeing their children again with the Lord. Mm. Now, that's something that we've not really talked about, life after death. Yeah, and yes, yeah, the key to ultimate Christian hope, isn't it? Mm. Yes, we have hope in this life because Jesus loves us. And he never leaves us. He turns our scars into something beautiful. But if you think about it, healing is only temporary anyway on this side of the grave. Our ultimate hope has got to be eternal. That's right. I mean, the night before my brain surgery, I wrote letters to Pete and the boys just in case. I was so scared, but it was a comfort to know that if I died, it wasn't going to be the end. Pete and I have lived with so many unanswered prayers, and we still do. But no matter how hard I sometimes find it to trust God, I just can't imagine how bleak it would be to suffer the same stuff, mm. but without this kind of hope. Mm. It reminds me of that lovely verse, we, we do not grieve as those without yeah. hope, mm. we, for we yeah. believe that Jesus died and rose again. And yes, we do grieve as Christians, but even at death's door, we have something to look forward to. That's right. Gemma, can, can I finish with just one more story? It's not from the book, uh, but I think it does really sum up so many of the things we've been trying to say through these five sessions. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, there was this lovely old Japanese dairy farmer called Toshiyuki Kuroki. Mm -hmm. He'd been married for 30 years when his wife went blind from um, complications with diabetes. 
Mr. and Mrs. Kuroki had dreamed of retiring and taking a road trip around Japan, but instead he watched her spiraling into a, a deep depression. Mm. She shut herself away from the world, and Mr. Kuroki just felt increasingly helpless and hopeless. He didn't know what to do until one day he had a brilliant idea. Mr. Kuroki went out and he planted thousands and thousands of these. Heavily scented flowers throughout their farm. Do you, do you want to see a photo of、yes. the two of them? It's so cute. It's like the、oh, cutest、look. old crinkly Japanese couple you've ever seen. Oh, but look at those flowers! Know, isn't it? Beautiful, stunning, gorgeous. You see? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. I'm told it took <laughs> Mr. Kuroki two years, but gradually the whole place became just a blanket of bright pink moss flocks. His wife couldn't see it. But she could enjoy the gorgeous aroma everywhere she went. Wow, that is truly beautiful. I'm told that、um, when the moss phlox blooms every spring, thousands of tourists now come to the Kuroki's farm to smell the heavenly fragrance,、uh, to see this blanket of pink, and above all, to catch a glimpse of Mr. and Mrs. Kuroki walking through a garden planted. And tended by love. Wow! <laughs> you know, many people have obviously got their own heartbreak, their own equivalent of Mrs. Kuroki's blindness. They might have lost someone they love, and their heart's been shattered into a thousand pieces. They might be facing the future without a、uh, marriage partner or the children for whom they've longed. They might be committed to a covenant relationship that disappoints them. More deeply than they dare to articulate, or they might find themselves a hostage to someone else's bad choices. Obviously, I could go on. So many of us have our own equivalent to Mrs. Kuroki's darkness, and we may not be able to understand why God does doesn't do the miracle that we so desperately need. But gradually, I believe He plants a garden around our loss. Slowly. He puts us back together again, like a Japanese craftsman using the gold in the cracks. Quietly, he takes the things that we've lost, as he did for Mark and Gladys Bliss, and he makes an abundant harvest.、Mm, so good. The thing is, just as Jesus still carries his scars, so each one of us continues to carry our scars too. Some people will. Walk with a limp for the rest of their lives, like Jacob. Others, like Bob Sorge or, 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 or like Sammy, endure illness for decades. Others, like Alan Emerson and Simon Thomas, have lost the person they loved the most. As Pete says, the wounds heal, but not the scars. I know that I've been scarred by the last twenty years, and it may not be very pretty. But I'm more convinced than ever that God weeps my tears and feels my pain in a way that no one else ever can. God's busy, I think, like Mr. Kuroki, nurturing something beautiful around all the things that we've lost. Oh, Pete, Sammy, that's absolutely beautiful. I can't tell you how much I feel like I've grown through these conversations. And actually, I'm just recalling all the different illustrations you've used. So, first there was the tree in、mm-hmm. our first session, and that beautiful assurance that grace grows best in winter. And then in the second session, it was the olive press, wasn't it? Yeah.、Um, the precious oil that flows from the pressured places in our lives. And I love the thing you said in that session about finding purpose in our pain,、mm-hmm. and. Renegotiating our relationship with our circumstances when we can't change right. them. Yeah, yeah. Then in the third session, it was God's world, God's will, and、yep. God's war, and that gorgeous story about your little Danny getting chickenpox. I absolutely love that one. <laughs> and then last time there was the sextant with its invitation to navigate the darkness by the light of stars that might have died. Yeah, yeah. And there was the message about lament and that beautiful spiritual we listened to on record. And then now in this session, it's been this beautiful kintsugi、yeah. bowl, and the message about God making beauty out of brokenness. But honestly, for me, the 
the best thing has been having you here in the studio today, Sammy. Aww. Because, well, really this whole journey has been, well, your story. And it is such a joy to see you by Pete's side. I've just loved it. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for the brilliant job that you've done in drawing the best out of Pete too. Oh, it's been fun. I've <laughs> enjoyed it. It's been really good. And actually, Pete, I know that you're so great at this. So would you mind just closing the series now with a word of prayer for us? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Mm. Um, just wherever you are, why don't, we just pray together now. Lord Jesus, thank you for all that you suffered with us and for us, that through your death and resurrection, we can have hope, even when everything feels hopeless. We can find answers ultimately, even when we feel lost in the short term. I pray, Holy Spirit of the living God, that you would come and bind up our broken hearts, that you would come wisdom of God and make sense out of the things we don't understand, that you would help us to trust you and that you would rise again in our darkness and our difficulties and turn our brokenness into something beautiful for your glory. Mm. We pray these things. In the name of the resurrected Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 This is one of our many resources, and if you would like to find out more about 24-7 Prayer and the resources we provide and all that we do around the world, head over to 247prayer.com. Mm -hmm.